This video is created by Jagrat Creation. It is on accounting for branches depend and run stock and data system. This is my first lecture on stock and data system. After uploading few sums on data system. I have selected a very simple sum for explaining stock and data system. I intend to compare the difference in recording of journal entry under data system and stock and data system. So allow me to do that while solving this sum. My intention is not to solve the sum actually but my intention to explain the theory part for stock and data system. Just observe the sum on the screen. I intend to solve Kembe Store Limited sends goods to branch at Madras at a selling price which is 25% above cost. From the following particulars find out the branch profit showing necessary ledger accounts on the stock and data system. 10 details are given to you. So we are required to prepare necessary ledger accounts under stock and data system. Now first of all let us understand what are the necessary ledger accounts that we are required to prepare under stock and data system. So under stock and data system accounts prepared are for this sum branch stock account, branch data account, branch expense account, Goods sent to branch account, stock reserve for loading on stock, branch adjustment account for finding out the profit. So branch adjustment account is for the purpose of finding out the profit. So these are the necessary accounts that we are required to prepare. Now this stock and data system. Since this sum I am going to prepare these accounts, I am going to explain these accounts. I am going to, I have also decided to give the comparative journal entry for data system and stock and data system. Before I start that, let me tell you one thing very important. That whatever the principles that you are going to study in this stock and data system, that too in particular preparation of branch stock account and branch adjustment account. The concepts and the principles that you are going to learn in this stock and data system are exactly on the same lines or on the same lines, same lines, you are required to solve the sums in case of departmental accounts and that to of markup sums. In departmental account you are questioned the stock account, departmental stock account and markup account. The markup account that you prepare in departmental accounts is more or less alike to or similar to branch adjustment account and the branch stock account that you are going to learn in this stock and data system. So there is a relationship between this branch stock account and branch adjustment account with departmental stock in departmental accounting, stock account and markup account, they are on the same lines. This is what I wanted to just brief you. Now let me start with the sum explaining the details. So these are the accounts that I am required to prepare. Now, first of all, let me tell you about this branch adjustment account. Branch adjustment account is prepared into two parts. The upper part is known as trading account. Lower part is known as profit and loss account. Some teachers, instead of preparing this branch adjustment account, they give a label trading account and profit and loss account. But I want to give the right label branch adjustment account. But the upper part is for the purpose of finding out the gross profit. That's why it is a substitute of trading account, but not exactly trading account. Because in trading account, we write opening stock, closing stock, purchases and sales. We don't record those opening stock, closing stock, purchases and sales. But, in, but by recording opening stock, closing stock, purchases and sales, we find out the gross profit. Similarly, with the help of this upper part of this adjustment account, we find the gross profit. But by not writing opening stock, closing stock, purchase and sales, but we find out 
with a different analogy with different understanding but the upper part of this branch adjustment account is for the purpose of finding out the gross profit and the lower part of this branch adjustment account is for the purpose of finding out the net profit that is the first thing that i want to explain to you now branch stock account now this branch stock account shows the movement of stock at branch so branch stock account is prepared in the books of head office but that account display the movement of stock that occurs at the branch so if branch receives stock by any mode it will be recorded on this debit side if the stock goes out of the branch anywhere either to the customer or to the head office it will be recorded on the credit side so branch stock account is prepared to demonstrate the movement of stock at branch but that branch stock account is prepared in the books of head office this branch stock account is recorded for the purpose of recording movement of stock that's the first if the goods are sent at cost branch stock account is prepared branch stock account is prepared at cost if the goods are sent to the branch at an invoice price the branch stock account has to be prepared at an invoice price i'm going to consider the preparation of branch stock account when the goods are goods are sent at cost that i'm going to consider afterwards but at present i'm going to prepare this branch stock account wherein goods are sent at an invoice price and branch stock account is to be prepared at an invoice price and the movement of branch movement of stock at branch will be identified in branch stock account at an invoice price that is the first thing that you should understand branch debtors account this branch debtors account is also prepared in the books of head office when the goods are sold increase in debtors and the collection from debtors see what is the content of debtors account goods are sold to the customer what is the follow up goods are sold on credit to the customer what is the follow up go and collect collect cash from him if he pays cash cash is received if he give a return promise then it is known as bills received if he refuses payment it is bad debts he says that your goods are not worth i want to give your goods back then also it is known as sales return and at the time of making payment the customer asks for some discount to that extent, to that extent also the liability the recovery right from debtors reduces so debtors account is to be recorded with the recording on the debit side credit sale and the adjustment of credit sale by cash receipt by return promise by sales return by bad debts by discount allowed is to be recorded in the credit side all these things occur at the branch but head office records all this transaction as if these transactions are entered into by the agent and the agent transactions are assumed by the principal head office in its books of accounts so all the transaction of branch with debtors though they are the transactions of branch with the other party not with the head office but those transaction of branch debtors will be entered in branch debtors account goods sent to branch account goods are sent to branch goods are returned from the branch so this is the goods net goods received by the branch or sent to branch that is ultimately goods are sent either out of purchases so this goods sent to branch account is closed by transferring from purchase by transfer to purchase account or goods sent to branch can be recorded either by can that account can be closed by transfer into trading account all the expenses incurred for branch by the head office will be debited to branch expense account though the expenses are paid by the branch it's a transactions of branch with the rest of the world it is not a transaction with the head office but head office pays those expenses for the branch for the agent so what is to be done branch expense account debit to cash account stock reserve account now stock reserve account is required to be prepared when the goods are sent at an invoice price otherwise there is no need to prepare stock reserve account here the sum that we have considered wherein goods are sent to the branch at an invoice price so this stock reserve account is prepared i am going to explain the stock reserve account just 
starting the sum. Now on the basis of this explanation, stock 1 month 2016, 7,500. Now, as you know that the goods are sent to the branch at an invoice price that we have read by solving the sum. So, this is the opening balance of stock. Now, opening balance of stock. That is stock existed at the branch. Now, in stock and data system, system this stock existed at the branch as opening balance will be recorded as an open imbalance in this branch stock account. But in data system, the opening stock is presumed to have been given to the branch at the beginning of the year. So for opening stock under data system, journal entry recorded is branch account debit to opening stock account. While that type of entry can never be recorded in the stock and data system because this branch stock is to be carried forward at the beginning of the year as opening stock because this branch stock account appears in the closing trial balance or closing balance sheet of the head office. So this branch stock is to be recorded as opening balance. So what is the difference? Opening stock in data system, journal adjustment entry is recorded, branch account debit to opening stock account. This type of entry is not recorded in the stock and data system. This is not a transaction. At the beginning of the year, all the opening balances of the respective accounts are being carried forward. So, opening balance is carried forward. Now, this opening stock is valued at an invoice price as I told to you. Branch stock account is prepared at an invoice price. So, this stock is at an invoice price. It has a profit element. That stock was unsold in the last year. So it was unsold in the last year and there was a profit element. That profit is an unrealized profit. That profit is identified as stock reserve. Stock reserve. Let me find out what is the Campbell Stores Limited send goods to the branch at Madras by at a selling price which is 25% above the cost. So this 7,500 is a branch stock valued at an invoice price because branch stock account is always prepared at an invoice price. So this is an invoice price. Let me find out the profit element herein. So if 100 is the uh, 100 is the cost, then 25 is the profit element added. So 125 is the invoice price. So if 120 cost is 100. Load is 25. So 125 is the invoice price. If 125 is the invoice price, then profit element is 25. How much for 7,500? So this is the profit element. So in this 7,500, profit element is 1,500. Opening stock is to be valued at cost or net realizable value, whichever is less. Here there is no question of net realizable value. So opening stock is to be valued at cost. Here we have made a valuation of 7,500. There is an element of unrealized profit of 1,500. That unrealized profit appears as opening balance in stock reserve account. So here the branch stock is reported at an invoice price which has got a profit element. That profit element appears in stock reserve account as opening balance. So, so branch stock opening balance 7,000. Unrealized profit therein 1,500 appears in stock reserve account. So whenever, see, whenever you solve any time a solve sum on stock and data system and if the goods are sent to the branch at an invoice price, if you record the branch opening stock in branch stock account, though you are not told in the sum, immediately you have to write the opening balance in stock reserve account by default. The examiner is not going to tell you that write the opening balance in stock reserve account. Moment you write the opening balance in branch stock account, by default you have to write in all the sums the opening balance of stock reserve. This is how it gets recorded. Now this. One more point that you understand in case of data system when we prepared branch account. Opening stock and invoice price was recorded on the debit side of the branch account and the profit element thereon was recorded on the credit side of branch account. 
That is not the case in case of stock and debtor system. Here if the invoice price is recorded in branch stock account, the profit element there against must appear in branch adjustment account. So this stock reserve opening balance is to be transferred to branch adjustment account. So you have to write the adjustment entry, adjustment of loading in opening stock. What is the adjustment entry that you are required to record? Stock reserve account debit to branch adjustment account credit. So stock reserve account is debited and branch adjustment account is to be credited. This is how adjustment entry is required to be recorded. Now see, opening stock 7500 at an invoice price. Profit element therein is recorded on the credit side of branch adjustment account. This account is closed. It's a transitory account. So stock reserve opening balance is to be transferred to branch adjustment account at the beginning of the year. That you have to do by default. See the examination, they will give you branch stock opening balance at an invoice price. They will ask you to solve the sum by stock and debtors method. You have to do by default, by your own understanding and by your own vision. You have to immediately find out the profit element in the opening stock, which is valued at an invoice price. That much profit element loan must be recorded as opening balance in the stock reserve account. And that has to be transferred to adjustment account immediately. So moment you write the opening stock, opening branch, uh, opening stock in branch stock account, you have to follow all these things in spite of the fact that you are not told specifically in the sum to do all these things, but you have to do it by default. That's an important point to be understood. One, once again, let me remind, this branch stock account is prepared at an invoice price. To identify recording at an invoice price at cost, the adjustment entry for load is to be recorded. And all adjustment entry of profit element, load, is to be identified in this branch adjustment account. So branch adjustment account is prepared to remove the profit element that has been incorporated in the transactions of branch stock account. That's an understanding of adjustment. So opening stock 7500, stock reserve, this profit element in this opening stock is recorded in this branch adjustment account. This is how explanation of opening balance, opening balance of branch stock under stock and data system and that too when the goods are sent at invoice press, I have tried to explain you. Now let me proceed with the next one. Opening balance of debtors. So this is branch debtors account. Now under debtor system, opening balance of debtors. What is the entry recorded under debtor system? Branch account debit to opening debtors account credit. That type of entry cannot be recorded in stock and debtor system. In stock and debtor system, opening balance of debtors will be recorded in branch debtors account as opening balance. So let me write down this debtors opening balance in my branch debtors account. No journal entry is recorded when you write the opening balance. Goods sent to branch. This is also an invoice price, 75,000. Goods sent to branch. What is the entry under debtor system? Branch account debit to goods sent to branch account. What is the entry in case of stock and debtor system? When the goods are sent to branch, the branch stock level increases. So increasing stock level is to be recorded on the debit side. Depletion of the branch stock or decrease in the branch stock will be recorded in the credit side by when the goods are sent to the branch, branch stock increases. So branch stock account debit to goods sent to branch account credit. Branch stock account debit to goods sent to branch account credit. See, I am writing also the journal entry for the transaction for your better understanding. So if you are observing this sum, you should also start writing the journal entries and the adjustment entry that I record while solving the sum because this is a sum wherein my focus is to explain the theory by taking the practical illustration. Actually, this is a theory lecture. So branch stock account debit to goods sent to branch account. So these goods are sent at an invoice price. Now this 75,000 invoice price has a profit element. That profit element should appear in the adjustment account. That profit element should appear in the adjustment account. How much is the profit element? You know that 15,000 is a profit element. So the profit element 15,000 is to 
is to be recorded on the credit side of this branch adjustment account because this 75 requires 75000 requires an adjustment of 15000 here, seven, here the 15,000 extra is debited. So you should give a credit effect in an adjustment account. So adjustment account will be credited with 15,000. That I am explaining you right now. But I will do that at a later stage. So good send to branch entry is done. Now goods returned by the branch. When the goods are sent, stock increases. When goods are returned, stock decreases. When stock decreases, branch stock account is to be credited and good sent account also reduces. So for the return entry, good sent to branch account debit to stock account credit. When the goods are sent, branch stock account debit to good sent to branch account. When the goods are returned, reverse entry, good sent to branch account debit to stock account credit. So good sent to branch account debit 3000 to stock account credit 3000. Now this, this 3000 is also an invoice price because branch stock account is always prepared at an invoice price. So this is an invoice price. Now this 3000 has a profit element. How much is the profit element? 3000 divided by 5, 600 is the profit element therein. So you are required to write the adjustment entry for 600 profit element in this. Now the 600 profit element is recorded on the credit side of stock account. So it is to be adjusted by debiting adjustment account by 600. I am going to do that at the end of the or when I will conclude all this transaction, I am going to explain this, these things once again. So 3000 would send to branch account debit to branch stock account. I am going to write the adjustment entry by which the profit element in this 3000 will be removed. Profit element in this 3000 will be removed. That's an important point that you should understand. Now, cash sales. Now goods are sold by branch for cash. The cash is received by branch and remitted to HO, whatever it may be the instruction. Presume, we presume that it is being remitted to HO. So HO has received cash and goods are sold by branch. When the goods are sold by branch, branch stock declines. Branch stock goes down. When the branch stock goes down, sales will be credited to branch stock account. Here, in this sum, goods are sent to the branch at an invoice price. Goods are sent to the branch at an invoice price. Branch stock account is prepared at an invoice price. When the goods are sold, stock declines. So, cash account debit to branch stock account credit. That is the end cash account debit to branch stock account because branch stock declines. So stock account is to be credited for cash sales. Now credit sales. By selling goods on credit we get a right to receive from the debtors or the debtors are receiver for the goods that we have sold. So branch debtors account is to be debited. Stock at branch declines. So branch stock account is to be credited. So for credits in the journal entry is branch debtors account debit to branch stock account credit. Now remember, under data system when the goods were sold on credit, it is, under, it is a transaction between branch and the rest of the world. It is not a transaction between branch and head office. So it will not be recorded in branch account. That philosophy is not sustained, is not allowed here because all the transactions of branch are assumed by head office and recorded. So when the goods are sold by branch to the customer, branch debtors account is to be debited and branch stock account is to be credited. That's an important thing. This is a difference between debtor system and stock and debtor system. Cash received from debtors. Cash account debit to branch debtors account credit. Now cash received from debtors, it is a transaction between branch and debtors. That was not recorded in this fashion in case of debtor system. But in case of stock and debtor system, all individual transactions of branch with the rest of the world and the transaction between head office and branch are also to be recorded in the debtor system. That's an important understanding that students should hold. So cash account debit to debtor's account credit. Branch expense is paid by head office. So branch expense account debit to cash account. Branch expense account debit to cash account. When the expenses were paid by HO, 
for the branch under debtor system branch account debit to cash account here that is not the case the expenses for the branch are to be debited to branch expense account a separate branch expense account is prepared in the books of head office remember all these accounts are prepared in the books of head office it's a dependent branch branch is not maintaining separate independent books of accounts because with which it could prepare the trial balance but all the transactions of the branch are recorded by the head office in its books of accounts so branch expense account debit to cash account now closing balance of debtors will be recorded as closing balance. In debtor system, we write an entry for absorbing the assets at the end of the year. Branch stock account debit, branch debtors account debit, branch account debit. Those type of entries are not recorded in stock and debtor system. So closing balance of this branch debtors is recorded as closing balance. Closing balance of stock is recorded. So this is how all the 10 transactions are recorded. Now I would like to write down the adjustment entry. I have already explained the adjustment entry for opening stock by cream. I explained this stock reserve account that is being done. Now, how many transactions are there where profit element is there? Goods and goods return. Closing stock at branch. 75,000, 3,000, 6,000 are the items. They are the transaction between HO and branch or the internal matters where the profit element is included for that you are required to write down the adjustment entry so let me start with adjustment entry this 75,000 good sent to branch how much is the profit element therein if 125 is the invoice price then 25 is the profit let me work out for closing stock first of all so, so for how many items I am going to write down the adjustment entry Goods and goods return and closing stock. Let me start with closing stock. So 125 to 25, how much for 6,000? 1,200 is the profit element. Closing stock is recorded at an invoice price. Closing stock should be recorded at cost. The difference between invoice price and cost is an unrealized profit because this closing stock is not sold by the branch. It's an unsold stock. So, in an unsourced stock, the profit element is there, that is to be removed. How to remove that? For the purpose of removing that, you are required to create a stock reserve. From where to create stock reserve? Stock reserve is created from this branch adjustment account. So, entry for creating the stock reserve is branch adjustment account debit to stock reserve account credit. So, branch adjustment account debit to stock reserve account is credited. And this stock reserve account closing balance will be 1200 at the end of the year. So, this will be carried forward in stock reserve account. And same stock reserve balance in the next year will be transferred to the credit side of adjustment account because branch closing stock will become opening stock in the next year. This is how adjustment entry for closing stock is left. Now goods sent to branch 75,000. Goods sent to branch is 75,000. What is the profit element therein? One fifth. So 25 to 125 to 25 profit. How much is 75,000? 15,000. So goods sent to branch. Branch stock account debit to goods sent to branch account credit 75,000. In this 75,000 there is a profit element of 15,000. Now goods sent also should be recorded at cost. Who sent also should be recorded at cost. It is recorded at the invoice price. So I am required to write down the adjustment entry for 15,000. How to write the adjustment entry? Notice it, then I am explaining you. Good sent to branch account debit to branch adjustment account credit. Now what has happened? Good sent to branch account is to be recorded at cost. 75,000 invoice price, 15,000 is a profit. Recorded in the opposite side. So good sent to branch account has become at cost. As I told you, branch stock is to be recorded as 75,000. Whatever the profit element therein on this debit side, it should appear on the credit side of adjustment account. So 7,500 7, opening stock, profit element 1,500 appears on the credit side. 75,000 is the invoice price. Profit element therein 15,000 appears on the credit side of branch adjustment account. Similarly, Closing stock, invoice price, profit element there in 1200, opposite on the debit side. Here the profit is incorporated in the credit entry, 
So to remove that profit element in the credit entry, you should write that on the debit side. So here 1200 is recorded on the debit side. Here the profit element is included in the debit entry. To remove that profit element, you should give the effect on the credit side of branch adjustment account. That's a very important understanding. And this understanding is very useful to the students when they solve the sum of markup in departmental accounts. Understand that thing. So this adjustment entry is done. What is the adjustment entry? Go send to branch account debit to branch adjustment account. Adjustment of profit element against this 75,000 is to be done not in stock account but in adjustment account. The adjustment of profit element in the 75,000 in goods and to branch account is to be done in the goods and to branch account itself. That's an important point that you should understand. Now next, goods returned by the branch, 3,000. 125 to 25 profit, how much for 3,600? Now see, return. Who said, so this is return, 2 H or 3000. It has got a profit element, 600. Understand these things, profit element is 6000, I am sorry, 3000 return. Opposite entry effect. This has also profit element, this has also profit element. Here the profit element of 600 is to be removed. So profit element in this 3000 will be removed by writing a credit side 600. And the profit element in this 6, 3000 will be removed by writing the entry in the adjustment account. So what is the entry for that? Branch adjustment account debit to goods and to branch account credit. Very important entry. See, 3000 goods return. It is an invoice price. It has a profit element. We want to remove this profit element in goods and account. So 3000 has a profit element of 600 that is being removed by writing on the opposite side. Similarly, this 3000 is recorded in the credit side of branch account. There is a profit element, but for the removing profit, for removing profit from the items of branch stock account, you should not use branch stock account, but you should use branch adjustment account. Here the profit element is found on the credit entry. So to remove that profit, debit side of branch adjustment account is to be recorded. So this is how I have prepared branch stock account at an invoice price. Profit element therein is removed by recording entries in branch adjustment account. For identifying the profit element in stock one transitory account is prepared stock reserve account because it is being carried forward and ca carried forward for the next year and brought forward in the next year. So stock reserve accounts also explained to you. Now this is how all transactions are recorded and adjustment entries are recorded. Now, as I told to you, this branch adjustment account shows the gross profit. Now I want to bring to your notice one most important thing. I have prepared branch stock account. Opening stock, goods and goods return, closing stock, Cash sales, credit sales, everything is recorded. Now, first of all, try to balance the stock account. If you find any discrepancy, or if you try to balance the stock account, that is first scenario. Stock account will be balanced. Means total of debit and total of credit will be same. That is the first thing that can occur. Let us do what happens in this sum. In this sum, if you prepare, see, total of debit side, 82,500, have a total of credit side, 82,500. So my stock account has balanced. Suppose, there is no agreement of the debit total and credit total in stock account, then what happens? The total of debit side will be more and total of credit side will be less and there will be a missing item on the credit side. 
if there is a missing item on the credit side, that should be identified as loss of stock. In this sum, my total of debit side and total of credit side has agreed. So there is no loss of stock. But if the debit total is more than the credit total and the difference need to be recorded on the credit side, then that difference should be identified as loss of stock. Then question arises. Is that loss of stock is a normal loss or an abnormal loss? If it is a normal loss, then loss of stock, normal loss of stock is to be debited to the upper part of this adjustment account because normal loss of stock is to be adjusted against the gross profit. So if there is a any amount required to be recorded in the credit side of stock account for the purpose of balancing the account and if it is identified as normal loss then that normal loss gets debited in the upper part of this branch adjustment account because normal loss always gets adjusted against the trading profit, gross profit. But suppose that this difference is identified as an abnormal loss. If it is an abnormal loss, then the abnormal loss of stock should be bifurcated into two parts. One, cost element and the profit element. Profit element should be debited to the upper part of adjustment account and the cost element should be debited to the lower part of this adjustment account because abnormal loss is debited to profit and loss account. Once again, try to tell a branch stock account. If it agrees, verify. If it doesn't agree and the difference is found on the credit side, it is identified as loss of stock. That loss of stock may be normal. If it is a loss of stock, then cost element and the profit element in the loss of stock because the branch stock account is prepared at an invoice price. So invoice price, here you will get the loss of stock at an invoice price. That invoice price of loss of stock has got two elements, profit element and cost element. Both the elements are to be debited in the upper part of this branch adjustment account if it is a normal loss. But if it is an abnormal loss, then profit element in that loss of stock will be debited to the upper part of adjustment account and the cost element will be debited to the lower part of this branch adjustment account. I am going to take this type of sums in my subsequent lectures. But as I told you, this is more or less a theory lecture for me. So I am explaining all these things. Okay, one, once again. Have a total of branch stock account. If total agrees, very fine. If the total agrees, its interpretation is that goods are sold for cash by branch at an invoice price. Goods are sold by branch to the debtors at an invoice price. So this sales is sales has occurred at an invoice price. This credit sales has also occurred at an invoice price. So goods are sent at an invoice price. Goods are sold at an invoice price. Stock is also recorded at invoice price. So there is an agreement of total of the debit and credit. When you try to tell the stock account if the total agrees, then you should understand that the sales has occurred at an invoice price. And that's why branch account totals have tally. If they don't agree and the difference is, difference is required to be recorded on the credit side, it should be identified as loss. Either that loss is treated as normal loss then the entire cost element and profit element is debited to profit and loss account. If it is treated as an abnormal loss, profit element is debited to the upper part of the branch adjustment account, uh, profit and loss adjust, uh, this adjustment account, and the cost element is debited to the lower part of the adjustment account. Now third possibility. When you try to tell this stock account, if the difference is found on the debit side, means credit total is more than the debit total, Credit total is more than the debit total. Then what, what to do? If the credit total is more than the debit total, it can be interpreted in two ways. It can be interpreted in two ways. 
and the interpretation is based on the volume of the amount. If the amount that you find as a difference on this debit side because credit total is more than the debit total and if the amount is 100 rupees or 200 rupees some such small amount, petty amount then it should be treated as an abnormal gain. It should be treated as an abnormal gain. But if the amount found as difference on the debit side because the credit total is more than the debit total then you should presume that the goods are sold by branch either for cash or on credit they have not sold those goods at an invoice price but they have sold the goods at a price above the invoice price and when the goods are sold by branch either for cash or on credit above the invoice price then these two items that is recorded as sales on the credit side of branch or stock account that has got a profit element which profit element cost plus Profit load added by the HO while preparing invoice price and the goods are sold at more than the invoice price. So whatever the profit that has occurred to the branch by selling goods above the invoice price that will be reflected in this branch stock account when the difference is found on the debit side. Since stock and data system it is very important to understand the stock account. In stock account if you find opening stock, goods and cash sales, credit sales and closing stock and goods return. If all these items are there, then stock account should agree. If it agrees, goods are sold at an invoice price. If it doesn't agree, difference is found on which side. It is found if the debit total is more than the credit total, difference is requ required to be recorded on the credit side. That should be identified as loss. That loss is identified either as normal loss or abnormal loss. If it is a normal loss, it is debited to the upper part of adjustment account. If it is an abnormal loss, profit element is to be debited to the upper part of the abnormal no, uh, adjustment account and the cost element is to be debited to the lower part of the adjustment account. But suppose that the, if the difference is required to be recorded on the debit side and the difference is a petty amount, then it should be treated as abnormal gain and it should be transferred to the adjustment account. But if the difference amount is not petty, so total of credit side is more than the total of debit side, then amount is sizable or somewhat, uh, somewhat considerable amount is there then it should be treated as gross profit and that gross profit is earned because the branch has sold goods at a price above the invoice price. That's an important understanding that students should hold about this branch stock account. As I told to you in my in this lecture, my intention is just not to solve this sum but to explain the theory. So here in this sum the branch stock account is agreed. So goods are sold at an invoice price. There is no difference to be recorded on the credit side which can be identified as loss of stock or no difference is found on the debit side which could be identified as a reserve normal loan or gross profit that has occurred because the branch has sold goods above the invoice price. So next, debtors account, its total agrees 40,000. Now goods sent to branch account, goods are sent to the branch, that account is to be closed. It, it can be closed in true ways either by transferring the difference to trading account or by transferring difference to purchase account because goods are sent to the branch either out of purchases or goods are sent to the branch to be recorded the credit, uh, uh, on the credit side of trading account as goods outwards. So here the difference is found. How much? 57,600. So you have to write the adjustment entry. Goods sent to branch account debit to purchase account credit. So goods are sent to branch out of purchases, so purchase account is credited for that. This is how adjustment entries to be recorded for transfer of balance of goods sent account to the purchase account. Now branch expense account is to be closed. So branch expense account 2000, that will be transferred to the profit and loss account. So it will be transferred to the lower part of this adjustment account, branch adjustment account debit to branch expense account credit. This is how it is transferred. In this branch expense account, here in this is a first sum, so I took just one item of expense. There can be four, five different items of expenses paid by HO for the branch. Salaries, wages, advertisement, carriage, also all those expenses are paid by branch. Uh, expenses of the branch paid by a head office, all those expenses will be debited to branch expense account to cash account. Similarly, branch expense accounts will be, will be also will also be debited with the losses just like bad dates, 
that has occurred by collecting from debtors, discount allowed to debtors, that also will be debited to branch expense account. All those things, all those points I am going to cover in my subsequent lectures on stock and data system. But at this is a basic initial sum with wherein intention is to explain the theory. So branch expenses, expense account is not made of just one expense as you find in this sum. There can be various types of expenses and losses that we may we, we may debit to the branch expense account and ultimately at the end of the day, at the end of the year, the total of expenses will be transferred to branch profit and loss account, means lower part of the branch adjustment. Now, this is the closing balance of stock reserve. So closing stock is 6,000, unrealized profit there in this 1,200, that is carried forward. Now I want to find out cross profit. 16,500 minus 1,800, so gross profit is 14,700. Generally we find out gross profit by preparing trading account. Here the gross profit is found out, but this is not actually trading account. In trading account we write opening stock purchases, sales and closing stock. Here you find that opening stock purchases, closing stock and sales is not recorded. Even then we have found out the gross profit. So, as this upper part of adjustment account finds out the cross profit, I have given a label trading account because it finds out, sir, because by this we can find out the cross profit, but it is not actually trading account, it is the upper part of branch adjustment account. Now, let me explain this trading profit with different dimension. Now, sir. Moment the stock is there at branch, 7500, HO has given stock to the branch, presuming that the entire opening stock is going to be sold, so profit of 15,000 is going to be earned, so it is credited to the trading account, 1500 is credited to this adjustment account, 1500 is credited, as if profit has been earned. When the goods are sent, 75,000. The expectation of profit being earned, 15,000, so credit into the adjustment account. When goods are returned, the profit expected to be earned now is not going to be earned 600 rupees, so it is debited to adjustment account. When the closing stock, stock left at the branch 6,000, that is an unsold stock, so profit is unrealized, which was expected to be realized. So from expected realized profit, this 1,200 is to be deducted, so from this 1,500, 15,000 15, and 1,500, 600 and 1,200 are to be deducted. So when the goods are, opening stock and goods are sent, whatever the profit load was added by HO, it is presumed to have been realized and adjustment account was credited. And the extent to which that profit could not be realized because of goods return and the stock unsold at the branch. So that is adjusted by recording on the debit side. So total of credit minus total of debit will give you the gross profit. This is the another explanation of this gross profit. Now this gross profit is transferred to the credit side of lower part of the adjustment account, that is profit and loss account. From 14,700, 2,000 is to be deducted. So you will get the net profit that is to be transferred to general profit and loss account. So branch adjustment account debit to general profit and loss account. This is how the adjustment entries are recorded. Now, I have tried to explain you this, sir. While recording the entry in these accounts, I have already presented the journal entries, how the adjustment account is prepared, how should it be prepared. I have tried to explain you by making repetitions and in a lecture, repetition is not considered to be a good sign of a lecture. But for a teacher to make the concept clear initially in the minds of the student, kindly permit the repetition. I feel that you follow all these things. Thanks for watching.